Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. If you remember last week I said, we, we live, you know, you remember uh, 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 Tom Hanks when he did that, uh, that, that, that movie, uh, um, uh, Forrest Gump? Life is like a box of chocolates. No, let me tell you something. Life is an ocean of sharks. It really is. Because you know what? Sometimes you get bit. Sometimes it's just fear that's being instilled. But right now I'll tell you, everything that we're facing is like a sharknado. I don't know how that movie made money. It's so shocking. <laughs> it made so much money. I don't get it. Sharknado. But the reality is this. You have to ask yourself, what do I say to people when, when they start questioning what the things that are taking place in this world? What do I say to people when they're saying, man, I'll tell you, God is just about, the, I think some people right now think that God's a, like a whacker or something, like he just, he just whacks people out. Let me tell you something. I want to make something very clear. God does not create all these destructions that you see taking place on this earth. God is a God that gives life away. Think about it. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only. God's purpose is to bring life to people. However, God also promised that this earth is not forever. Right now what we're experiencing, the Bible, if you read all throughout the book of Luke, it begins to talk about the last days there will be earthquakes and, and, and wars and, and tsunamis and you name it. All these things that we're seeing today, these are just the signs of the times that we're living in. These are just signs, and I'm not trying to freak anybody out. This is also a time of great encouragement. Let me tell you why. Because we now, as the church, as the body of Christ, if you are a Christian, this is your time to be the hope for the world and to champion the cause of Jesus Christ that he still loves, he still saves, he still rescues, and that he still has a purpose and a plan for every single person on this earth. Do you know what you say to people when they say, wow, well, look at all the, the catastrophic distract, disaster that's happening on this world. I would tell people this. This is so yet maybe you can just steal my lines if you like. You know what? There has been catastrophic things that have happened since the beginning of creation. However, it's the fact is this, is that this earth is not forever. So it should make you wonder. I wonder what's going to happen to this earth. I'll take it a step further. I wonder what's going to happen to you. And so what you tell people is, you know what? Let me tell you something. In the midst of all this catastrophic destruction that we're seeing, this is a time where God is speaking to people, and he is like groaning, saying this in his heart and his mind, I want humanity back for me. God loves all people. God loves humanity. God's not about race. God's not about color. God's not about creed. God is about people. He loves all people, and he wants all people saved, and he wants all people healed, and he wants all people restored. It is God's greatest desire. And so today I'm going to be talking about Jonah. Everybody say Jonah. Jonah. Because let me tell you something. Jonah had a shark week. Oh, yeah, he did. And so not, not all of your shark weeks in life is a bad thing. Okay, so sometimes in order for, for God to get our attention, he, not that he created all this disaster, but let me tell you, he will take, he will take the mess and he'll exchange it for mercy. And this is the time where God wants to bring mercy to people. But he can't bring mercy without people. We are the greatest mercy carriers so that we can bring people back. And by the way, many of you know, we have a school in Oaxaca, Mexico. Uh, the earthquake, um, uh, most of the deaths were in Oaxaca. Uh, now the, the death toll is now up to 48 people that died. The other thing is that they haven't talked about, but uh, Oaxaca, Mexico right now is experiencing also a hurricane. I guess there's just so much going on. How can you keep track of it all? You can't. So, you know, our school right now, it's, it's flooded. And, uh, and so um, there's a little town that's only about three hours away from our school and the church. And uh, in this town, they have yet to retrieve any body since the earthquake. There is no, there is no 
uh, uh, FEMA, there is no uh, search and rescue, there is no authorities, there's, there's nothing, nothing, nothing at all what's, whatsoever. So let me tell you something, this has hit home. This hit home now. And so here's what we're going to do. I'm flying out tomorrow, me and our uh, missions director, we're both flying out tomorrow morning, probably either 1 a.m. Uh, Monday morning or 5 a.m. Monday morning. But we're going to go and we're going to bring relief to that little, t that little town with the church that we have in Oaxaca. We're all going as the search and rescue team, and we're going to help. And, uh, and my family owns a trucking company in Mexico, so I'm going to have them help me fill up a truck with medicine, clothes, food, and we're going to go, and we're going to be the team. Amen? God is waiting for the church to be the answer to a broken and dying world. And thank you so much for those of you, not all of you, but those of you that helped out with Houston, thank you so much. We also sent financial funds relief for that. We partnered with another church who sent teams because they're closer. They live in Texas. And, uh, and let me tell you something, all those funds have gone towards helping people right now in Houston as well. So just know that, that Elevate Church, you, you are the church. We're doing something about everything that we can that's in our reach. And so let's talk about Jonah Shark. Can we do that real quick? All right, let's do this. Are you guys ready? Okay, that was a weak yes, but that's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Point number one, write this down. Point number one, God desires for us to acknowledge his presence. Listen, in a moment like this, God wants his people to acknowledge his presence right now. At this very moment, why do I say that? Well, if you take the story, and I'm not going to read all of Jonah because that's just way too much information for you guys. And for the sake of time, I want to push forward. But in Jonah chapter 1, here's what the scripture says. It says, Jonah ran from the presence of God. Jonah ran from the presence of God, but God wanted him back. Let me tell you something. God not only wants humanity back, but God wants every Christian believer who maybe has been hurt, in the church or who maybe has experienced some form of bad treatment or or people christians good christians that just got caught up with the world and and then they just kind of got swept away by sharknado and then now they're just out there and they're just struggling let me tell you something god wants even the believer the christian who's sitting in every single church in the world today who is maybe far away from god god wants you back God wants you back and he wants you whole and he wants you healed and he wants you restored and he wants you to live the purpose that he designed you for. God wants you back. Look at two or three people say, God wants you back. He does. He wants you. He needs you. And so I, I, I totally understand it that sometimes we can, uh, can kind of, you know, walk away from God. I get it. But, but this is the time where, listen, it's not, it's not a time to fall back. It's a time to press in. Acknowledge his presence. I need his presence right now. And so here, here's what happens. So Jonah, Jonah gets a, a pamphlet in the mail from God like this. And God says, hey, Jonah, I'm sending you on a mission trip. And so Jonah opens his mail and he brings out the little pamphlet and God wants to talk to him. But many of us start reading in the book of Jonah. But let me tell you something. It started back in the book of Nahum. And he begins to speak to him. And this is what the brochure said on God's mission trip. Are you guys ready? This is what it said. In Nahum chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, look, this was, the, this was the content in the brochure. Trip out on this. Uh, Noah, <laughs> woe to the city of blood. We're talking about the city of what? Nineveh. All right, one person reads their Bible. Awesome. Okay, so he's talking about the city of Nineveh. Okay, Jonah was called by God to go to Nineveh. Jonah, just so you all know, was a Christian believer. Jonah had the office of prophet. He was a prophet that was a voice for God who was supposed to bring a message to people, good people, bad people, ugly people, evil people. How many know that God loves all people regardless of their status? That should be some good news right there. And so he says, woe to the city of blood. This is what his brochure said. Where Jonah, it's full of lies. It's full of plunder. Never without victims, the crack of whips, the clatter of wheels, galloping horses, and, 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 uh, uh, and jolting chariots, charging cavalry, flashing swords, and glittering spears. Many casualties, Jonah, piles of dead, bodies without number, people stumbling over the corpses. Jonah, that's where I'm sending you. He's like, no, thank you, God. I... 
I, I, don't, I don't want that because I think so many of us, we read the story of Jonah and we're just like, wow, Jonah, what a, what a win, man. Why didn't you just go tell the people? No, understand that, that, that the, the people of that time, just so you guys get a clear picture, the people of Nineveh were like the ISIS of this generation. And so, so please, th just understand because this is going to rock your heart right now. Ready? Okay, so the people of Nineveh was the generation of ISIS today. Who does ISIS kill today? Come on, that's not a cuss word. Say it together. Right, one, two, three. Christians. Christians. ISIS kills Christians. The people of Nineveh killed God's people. As a matter of fact, Nineveh was the enemy of Israel. So the reason that Jonah did not want to go and speak a message that God wanted him to speak, which was a simple repent, turn from your wicked ways, and I will not destroy you, but restore you. And you know what? Jonah was like, heck to the no. Man, God, are you kidding me? That's our enemy. They have killed our people. They have killed your people. What are you talking about? And see, that's, that's the mercy that we see with God. It's almost like, Katrina, it's almost like just think about your worst enemy. The person that who has hurt you, just, ah, we all got one of those in our life. And God said, I want you to go save them now. And you're just like, hmm. What? Hell no. You're like, Lord, they need to go to hell. You know, it's like, they're, 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 they're the devil in the flesh. Lord, what do you mean go save them? What is wrong with you, God? But see, the reason I bring this message is because every single one of us have a little Jonah in us. You see, if you're, not, if you're not in the will of God, you are running away from God. If you're not running with God's plan and purpose, then you're running from it. You see, title is not enough in this time that you're living in now. Saying you're a Christian it's just not enough. God did the part of saving you. Now God called you to rescue. God is not calling anybody in this room to Syria, so don't trip. The only place God is calling you to is to your workplace. It's called the place where you bring souls into the kingdom. It's the place where you share what God has done in your life. It's the place where you become the Jonah of this generation and you begin to tell people, hey, listen, God wants you back. He loves you. Like what, what is so difficult to just tell people this? Simple, just simple. Hey, man, you know what? I just want to tell you, um, you know, Frank. We'll just say you're Frank. Frank, I just want to tell you, man, that, uh, listen, God loves you, man. And he wants you back. And, and Frank would be like, dude, what are you talking about? He wants me back. I never was with him. It, no, no, you were. You just didn't know it because God created you for him from the very beginning. And then sin came into this earth, and then it separated you from God. And so God wants to connect with you again. How hard is that? Does that sound weird? No, it's not weird at all. You know why? Because everyone acknowledges that there is a God. Most people, even atheists acknowledge that. When they're about to die, they always say, God, right? <laughs> or they say, oh, my God. So, so let's just keep it real. Everyone, listen, that's why, that's why, that's why Jesus sh will be exalted above every name. And every knee will bow. I didn't say, and some knees will bow. At the end of all this, atheist, believer, non-believer, doubter, hater, everyone's going to bow whether you like it or not. You might as well bow and surrender with a free will. Well, I don't know who I'm preaching to today. Is this the church of the cold? Or are we hot? We're hot. Okay, good, good. good. Just, I'm just checking. And so he gets this, this, he gets this little, this invitation. And Jonah, just so you guys get, it, he's like, man, no, God, what are you, what are you doing? What, what happens to us when, when you don't want to reach people that are ugly? You've judged. You've judged. Who are you to judge? Anyone regardless of their background, their, their lifestyle, their, you may know, listen, there are Christians right now that you and I know, man, they're living in deep sin, and you're just like jerk. You know what? God wants them back. God wants everyone back. 
God wants everyone back. He wants humanity back. And so, of course, we know Jonah the prophet, he's trying to run from God's call. Let me tell you something. Jesus gave every single one of us a call. It's called the Great Commission, not the Great Suggestion. Think about it. When was the last time you led anyone to Jesus? Because that's the call Jesus gave you as a believer. He said, go. You know what God said to Jonah? Go to Nineveh. You know what God said to you? Go to your workplace. Go to your family. Go to your community. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's, that's, that's our call as believers of Jesus Christ. We are to go and we are to share. We are to bring hope. We are to bring faith. <clears throat> we are to bring the presence of God in a horrible situation. In Oaxaca, we leave Tuesday. We'll drive to that small little town. Let me tell you something. The glory of God is coming with us. That town will come to Jesus. And let me tell you, most of the towns that are outside of Oaxaca, they're all indigenous people. So they worship gods. But we're going to put a name to a God. And his name is Jesus. So it's not just relief, it's Jesus. We're going to have all eyes turned to Jesus. And I'm believing we're going to have all kinds of crazy salvations, right? So we're going to do the practical, but we're also going to do the spiritual. Guys, you got to be spiritual heads here. Jonah was a hater. He didn't like what God was calling him to do. He didn't want to obey him. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. And God, let me tell you something. When God calls you to do something, your calling is irrevocable. Aren't you glad that you can jack it all up and then God says, okay, but I still have a calling. Huh? You can change lanes, but the finish line remains the same. Glory to Jesus, right? Come on, isn't God good or what? Oh, I love my God. I just love him. And, and you know what? Jonah had a problem with the goodness of God because you know what? He just thought that there's no way these people deserve good. Everyone deserves good. Everyone deserves You know why? Because he's a good God. And therefore, everyone deserves good. And uh, we need to get this spirit back in here. Let me tell you another reason why Jonah didn't want to go. This is pretty ridiculous, but this is a little bit of us too. The reason Jonah also didn't want to go was because of his reputation. What do I mean by that? Well, think about this. He was known as the prophet of his time. So he's preaching to his people. Hey, listen, it's easy to preach to the choir because you get amens from them, right? Amen. Go, you go, pastor. Yeah. But let me tell you something. <laughs> but it ain't easy for someone who has status quo. He's a prophet. And his, his, his issue was what if I go and I tell them what God said and they don't repent? How is that going to look on my image? Let me bring it home to you. Some of us don't share our faith because we're afraid of being rejected. It's the same spirit. It's still about you. You're afraid of what people are going to say to you. Or you feel, I'm too stupid, I'm too dumb. Let me tell you something. Even to judge you is wrong. Paul said, I don't even judge myself. Who am I to judge me? Only God judges. And so for you to say, I can't do that. I don't know how to share my faith. I, no, 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 no. It's very simple. Open your mouth. Hey, this is what God did in my life. You know what God did? Man, I was, I was, I was so engulfed with rage and anger. And, and, and man, my daughter was about to die. And, and I, I, I had no one to help. I was an atheist, man. And then all of a sudden I pray to God and, and, and I ask for his help because doctors said we can't help you with your daughter. I'd do anything for my baby girl. Wouldn't you do anything for your little girl? She was dying. Would you do anything? You would, right? I did anything. And I called on the God that I said there was no God. And guess what? The God that was no God became my God. He saved my daughter, rescued my life, changed my life. And here I am. Oh, my God. <laughs> was that hard? Why do we complicate it? You don't need to bring ten scriptures and a poem. You don't need to do all that. You know what you do? You bring your story because people, listen, people can challenge your theology, but they can't question your story. Huh? I got a story. And let me tell you something, and I am still living that story right now. And so you can question my theology, but don't question my story. And so know your story. What did God do for you? Some of us need new testimonies. God wants to do some new stuff. Is that okay? 
And so don't be the person like Jonah where all of a sudden, you know what, he just thought that, you know what, I don't want to, re- I don't want to mess up my reputation because if these people don't respond, man, I got to go back to church on Sunday again. What if it doesn't happen? Let me tell you something. Is it up to you or God? Who's, who does the burden lay on, you or God? Your job is just to obey him. If God tells you, go tell that person I love them, and that person says, screw you, I don't love, get out of my face. You know what? You, still, you are still the man or the woman. You know why? Because your obedience was greater than the sacrifice of you doing that. God wants your obedience. And so you have to realize that God is wanting the, 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 the next generation of Jonas that are not runners but that are goers. God wants you to go. Look at two people say, come on, it's time to go. And let's stop wasting time caring about foolish things, how we'll look and what people will say and, and you know what, how are they going to respond? You know what, you kill the dream before the dream ever gets started. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just go out there. Just do it. I always tell my staff, my team, like even when they did this, I'm like, just let loose, guys. You know what? Because you know what happens? Fear, st- it, 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 it just starts creeping you up, nervous, nerves. And you know what that does? It, it, it literally, it quenches the anointing that God wants to use in you and through you. And so you just have to be like, oh, what the heck, I'm just going to go for it. If I sound crazy, oh, wow. I'm crazy. Everyone will know it now. Praise Jesus. You know? Are you guys with, with me today? And so check this out. So, <clears throat> so he obviously has a problem with Nineveh because he feels like they don't deserve forgiveness. They don't deserve a second chance. And, uh, and he figures, I'm comfortable. You know why? Because when he was prophesying to the Israelites, it was comfortable, man. You're talking about peoples. Right? I mean, it's fine. It's funny how, how Christians will have Bible studies with Christians, but why don't you start a Bible study with non-Christians? Huh? We already have enough Christian time. Let's go have some soul winning time. Here, here's what, look, let me give you another verse. Luke 6.32. Look at what Jesus tells his people. Look at this. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Right? Like what? Now, I'm not saying don't love the people that we already do life with, okay? We love them. But he says, but even sinners love those who love them. In other words, God is saying, hey, listen, if you're comfortable sitting in your chairs, listening to messages, nice AC, yay, we got sharks, and we got great music, and yay, and patty cake, patty cake, we were singing, worshiping, but then you don't go out of here and do something with the, with the transformation that God has done in here, huh? Come on, what God has done in here needs to get out there, and, and that's what God was doing with Jonah. You see, I think that Jonah probably forgot what God saved him from. And so many times we stop sharing our faith because we forgot what God did for us. Do you remember when you were jacked up? Do you remember when you were messed up? Do you remember when you were addicted to alcohol, drugs, or, you know, you were a little cray-cray? Do you remember that? Do you have any ex-cray-crays in here? Anybody here? Yeah, I yeah, know a lot of you, man, a lot of you. But God, but God was faithful to deliver you and to set you free. That's the same love we got to give back. I, I had to I had to speak this because church, these these what you saw in that video, that's two weeks. Now it's like, I wonder what's gonna happen this week. I was I was on the phone this morning and yesterday with Oaxaca with our team and our pastors and, and they're saying this place has not stopped shaking. The earthquakes are still going right now. They're still it's still shaking. And, and so here, here's the thing. You know what? Naturally, I can have the fear like, dang, what if I'm there and something really big happens, you know? They're talking tsunamis and, and, and then right now it, they're in the middle of their hurricane. But let me tell you something. You have to know when God tells you to do something, you got to do it. You got to execute. Let's keep going. Can we go just a little bit more? We're almost done. We're almost done. So, so check this out. So what happened to Jonah is what happens to, to us. Jonah was avoiding the responsibility that God gave him. What happens with you and me? Sometimes we avoid the responsibility that he gave us. What's the responsibility he gave us? The responsibility he gave us is to go into all the world and preach the gospel, right, and to bring hope to a hopeless generation. And so Joel, I mean, uh, Joel, Jonah got so 
so up in himself that he started avoiding and he's running and we know that in, it, that he gives in the ship, they throw him off the boat and, and we know the whole story. You saw the monologue. Did you like that monologue? We wrote that just two days ago. Alexis, my daughter, memorized it last night and then here she goes. It was amazing. I was like, wow, incredible. But check this out. Check this out. So Jonah is avoiding his responsibility. That's like me being the pastor of Elevate Church, and I'm avoiding coming to speak to you every week, counsel you, guide you, lead you, direct you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's kind of weird. How do you do that? Well, if you're a Christian, how do you do that? How do you avoid the fact that God saved you so that you can save others? You can't avoid that any longer. I love it. Kurt, Kurt is a... Uh, 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 works for the airlines. He's a flight attendant. And, uh, and periodically, while he's up in the air, he'll be winning people to Jesus Christ on the plane up in the air, his co-workers. As a matter of fact, uh, in the last month, he's led two people to Jesus Christ, or actually three people to Jesus Christ in the last month in the air. And then he takes a picture. They're, they're taking pictures together. They, hey, this person just received Jesus Christ. Like, you know, <laughs> whatever. You know, all gangster throwing his, his airline sign or whatever. You know, you know. Southwest, yeah, you know, <laughs> and, but, but I love it because here's the deal. Yes, he's a flight attendant, but he's a soul winner flight attendant, amen. Come on, it doesn't matter what your career is. Come on, pastor, I'm a business owner. Well, okay, you're, you're a soul winner business owner. Put soul winner in front of whatever you are. I'm a hamburger flipper. Okay, soul winner hamburger flipper. Whatever... Whatever you put your hands to, it has to include souls. You can't, you can't pretend you're a Christian and not win souls into the kingdom. That is unacceptable. You are running away from your responsibility. Can I give you a fun fact? Well, it's not fun. It's a scary fact, actually. Uh, so y'all know ISIS, right? Let me tell you what ISIS does. ISIS does three things. Uh, before they go into their sleeper cell camps uh, in the West, right here, our, West, our Western world, what they do is this. They go to boot camp in Syria. They, they train uh, on explosives. They train on killing hand, hand combat. But you know what they do? When they're done with boot camp, they put them in a room, and uh, they do three things. The first thing is they go on video camera. And uh, they basically tell the people, this is how I want my funeral to be. Because to them, it's glorious. They're willing to give their life to, to a cause for a God named Allah, who has no power, obviously. Okay, But they believe in it so much that they leave instructions. So they say on the camera, this is how I want my funeral to be. This is what I want you to say at my funeral. And this is what I want you to do with my finances that I, when I get paid. And this is how I want you to take care of my family. When they leave that camp, they reckon themselves dead. Stay with me. They leave the camp, boot camp. They already know I don't exist anymore. Why? Because they know they're going to go explode themselves somewhere to take lives for a God that doesn't exist. The Apostle Paul was, an, was like an ISIS of his time. He was murdering Christians, right? He was giving the green light to people and saying, whack them. And they would take out Christians, martyr Christians and everything. Jesus meets Paul on this miraculous intervention, knocks Paul off his high horse. I bet he uppercut him, just boom. And then Paul falls off the horse, and then, and then God, Jesus actually, it was Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? Paul, Saul at that time, then became Paul. Because when God changes you, he changes your name. And, and then Paul said, what do you mean, oh God? And so he has this radical transformation. And you know what happens in this radical transformation? The apostle Paul becomes the greatest preacher of all Bible time. Want more souls than anybody. But let me tell you something. Why did I bring up the, the, the ISIS thing? Because let me tell you something. God thought about giving your life completely before any man on earth. 
Look at this. Look at Galatians fast. Are you guys, are you guys there? Okay, quickly. Come on, let's get out of here. Galatians 2.20. Here's what Paul says. He finally has this transformation and he comes before the people and he says, I have been crucified with Christ. Check this out. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, please listen to me. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Leave that verse up there. Check yourself. Paul said, I reckon myself to be dead. And whatever God wants me to do, I live this life in faith in the Son of God. Can you guys post my question up, please? How would you describe the life that you now live in faith? Because Paul said, as for me, I'm dead. I don't live anymore. What was he saying? I don't live for me no more. It's not me, 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 I, 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 me, poor me. He's like, no, I don't live like that no more. He's like, you know what? When Jesus died on that cross, I died with him. I went with him. I died. I died to me. I died to my ideas. I died to my, man, it's no longer, I live for Christ now. I live for Jesus. I give this life to him. If Jesus says, tomorrow you go to Oaxaca, you better go to Oaxaca. If Jesus says, go talk to that person, you go talk to that person. You love on that person. If Jesus says, go to those students, you go to those students. Why? Because it's no longer I who live. It's Christ who lives in me. It's no longer what you want. It's what, it's what he wants for you. And what he wants for you will always be greater than what you ever want in this life. I promise you. We need to come back and we need to examine our heart and say, do we have a Paul spirit in us? Or do we have a me spirit that's still leading us? He said, in this flesh, I serve God. In this flesh, flesh and blood, I serve him. It's not about me no more. Got to die at some time. You know why he said, I, I, I no longer live? Because think about it, if you're dead, can you be offended anymore? Dead people can't be offended no more, right? Dead people don't get angry no more. Dead people aren't dramatic anymore, right? They ain't causing drama or trauma in anybody's life, right? You're dead, right? Nothing moves you. And that's what Paul is saying. You, church, need to come to the place where nothing moves you anymore. Because it's no longer that I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Stand to your feet. Let's get out of here. Quickly, quickly. Quickly. Listen to me. God wants his people back. Maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you're a believer. You are a proclaimed Christian and you've been far away from God and you know it. You know it. You know it. Don't pretend. You know it. You and God know it clearly but God loves you regardless of what you know right now he loves you he's not mad at you he's madly in love with you he's not angry at you God listen God's not a hater he's a lover he loves people he loves people at their worst and he loves people at their best and so maybe you're that Christian that maybe it's just been like the title like yeah I'm a Christian but it hasn't gone beyond your title God has anointed you God has placed his spirit in you to breathe life to dead places, wherever that may be. You are a mercy carrier. Mercy, bring mercy to the people that you work with. Come on, be the church, guys. God needs the Jonas of this generation to be different than the Jonah of the last generation. Here's what happened with Jonah, so that you all leave here and wonder what happened yes did he obey God at the end well of course after you get eaten by a shark who wouldn't heck to the yeah I'd obey him too if I got eaten by a shark I'm like yeah, I'll do it so he did it against his will in the sense of like yeah 
he let that situation still keep him bitter. You know why? Because at the end of the story, after he proclaimed that message that God told him to say, you know what happened to him? You would think that, and the people repented, and the people had everybody fast and pray. Even children, even their animals had to fast and pray. You would think that Jonah would have been so happy like, yay, God, we won them. No. You know what the Bible says? That Jonah walked away dissatisfied and disappointed with God. Maybe you're a Christian and you're dissatisfied and you're disappointed. If you notice in this story, if you guys read your Bible, you never heard of Jonah ever again. Never again. That was the last that anyone ever heard of Jonah. The last. God wants to use your life. And he needs a new generation of Jonas that not only obey, but rejoice with the salvation of man. Ugly, bad, evil people coming to Jesus. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.